it's a victory Monday. The Houston Texans on a three game winning streak. CJ Stroud, maybe his worst game of the season, three interceptions. <laughs> However, I am not overreacting to this. Guys, welcome to another episode of Believe in the Houston Texans. I am one part Ruben Calvillo. Y'all know who this handsome man is, Harley Dugan. We are reacting to the Houston Texans 21 to 16 victory over the Arizona Cardinals. This episode was brought to you by Bet Online. The holiday season is off and rolling with NFL in full stride and the NBA and NHL hitting midseason form. Bet Online is your number one destination for all of your sports rager and info. With up to the minute sports wagering news, odds, trends, and predictions, Bet Online is the top spot for everything pro and amateur sports. And not just the big four, Bet Online has info available at your fingertips with both desktop and mobile access at any time for almost any sport that is played. From MMA to international soccer, head to the Bet Online today and remember to use our promo code BLEAV, B L E A V, for your 50% welcome bonus. On your first deposit, bet online where the game starts. Uh, drop the W's in the chat. Drop them. Mm. Mm. I'm feeling dangerous. I'm feeling, you know, you know, I'm gonna go little Jameis Winston. Oh, eat it up, eat it up. Oh, that's a W, baby. Mm. Man, I know he threw three interceptions, Harley. I know. Now, one of the main storylines is that takes him out of the MVP conversation. Honestly, that's okay. Who cares? This is a rookie at the end of the day. We are forgetting that this is C.J. Stroud's first year in the NFL. That's how special he's been. Three interceptions, it's going to happen. I am not losing confidence whatsoever in C.J. Stroud. I still think he's a top three quarterback in the NFL. But what is crazy is that you won this game. And the message is, even though I made mistakes, even though I committed turnovers, I can still grind out a W like the chat has him right here. Yeah, man. It's an absolutely fantastic day to talk about a Houston Texans three game winning streak. Count them uh. one, two, three, three game winning streak. That's a W, ladies and gentlemen. It, it, it was ugly offensively in the second half. CJ Stroud actually drove down the field, but then th threw some turnovers. You know, mm. it wasn't pretty for him. And it's sad to say this is his worst game of the season when he still had over 300 passing yards, two tutties, sure, three interceptions, but he was still precise. He was still accurate. He made some mistakes, and we tend to forget he's a rookie quarterback because of the performance so far entering this game, 15 touchdowns, two interceptions prior to, today, to Sunday's stats. And, you know, he's still in the midst of talks for MVP. Mm -hmm regardless of this game. But to me, the biggest thing here is, okay, Rook, that's all right. What do Miko Ryans and company always say? This is a team sport, right? It's all about getting everybody to buy in mm -hmm. and have that swarm mentality. He called them a family after the game with the post-game speech. And it, that's just the best way to describe it. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, CJ. You, you ain't got it right now? Don't you worry. Defense got your back. You've been holding us down the last few weeks. Now we're going to do our part for you. We're going to have Derek Stingley get an interception. We're going to have Christian Harris come up huge. We're going to have Blake Cashman get 19 tackles. We're going to have Will Anderson come out here with a really good statement game from him. Little Steven Nelson action with the batted pass at the end. The last two plays, identical plays, they're mm. the same plays. D'Amico Ryan said, you know what, Kyler Murray, if you want to win this game, you go ahead and do it. But I'm going to send the kitchen sink at you. I'm going to send two all-out blitzes at you. And kudos to you if you get that pass off to whoever it is in the end zone. The Texans are here, man. Three-game winning streak, and we're one game behind in that division lead playing <clears> the Jags <throat> next this Sunday. <clears throat> like Andres said, and shout-out to Andres, defense won us that game. Sure. And – it's, you know, halftime adjustments are a real thing. Yes. Offensively, working in the first half, 
And like you mentioned, we were still driving down the field. You just didn't put up six defensively. In the first half, the Cardinals were kind of moving the ball on you, having their way. It was first down, first down, 10 yards, 10 yards. But you hunkered down into the second half, multiple stops on fourth down. And like you brought up the two all-out blitz, it pays that, you know, that's all D'Amico Ryans. That was a statement by him. And you know what was crazy? It was to see the crowd. And I saw the camera shake a little bit. And gosh mm. dang it, it took me back to the Bulls on parade days with J.J. Watt, Antonio Smith, Connor Barr, and Sean Cody, the defensive line that we know and love. I, I was like, what am I watching? And the defense, I mean, for the first time we could say this all season, they won you this game. Yeah, there's many games they have kept you in, Mm. but C.J. Stroud ended up winning the game. Uh, This is the first game where you can full-heartedly say, okay, D'Amico, I see see what you really got cooking up in here, man. And that's what's so scary is this defense – this defense ain't ready, man. Like, let's be real. There's so many pieces away from being a legitimate defense, mm. and that's kudos to your head coach. That's kudos to the defensive mm. staff. Everybody was going, oh, Matt Burke, oh, he's a horrible defensive coordinator. Yep. Oh, my goodness. It, D'Amico said, no, 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 we ain't going to worry about Matt Burke. What Matt Burke brings is the – attitude that you need he has the right attitude he fell in line and said you know what it's okay I don't need to be a defense coordinator D'Amico you got the defense coordinator rain and head coach rain everybody said oh well you know uh, the first time head coach is going to be calling plays oh that that's that's going to be tough that's so much unsuccessful coaches in the league that play with both caps on their head D'Amico said ain't no problem ain't no problem he is doing his thing and it is fantastic to finally see this defense really doing their thing we need more people in the building that's Mm. one thing though that camera was shaking and it was loud that h-town proud people we got it all right we holding it down but we we need a lot more people in that stadium man pretty sad that that was the lowest Mm. attending game in quite some time i know it's the cardinals you know the cardinals are kind of boring let's be real um this coming week you got the Jaguars. You're playing mm-hmm. for first place in the division. I expect a sold-out place. I expect it to be banging. I expect that hometown crowd to overtake the uh, ear comms for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I expect everybody to be loud. I expect everybody to be there and get the party started. I cannot wait. I know we're talking Cardinals, but I cannot wait to get mm-hmm. going against these Jacksonville Jaguars. You know, I feel like the Texans need to do something because the stadium does look full, but it doesn't look full in the beginning. It looks like no one's there. And it goes back to when the Rockets, right, when they were in their play, because the Rockets have one of the worst home crowds, I mean, in the NBA. And and, and I'm not over-exaggerating here. Even there in playoff games, you'll see empty seats. But they opened up the gates like an hour or two earlier, had dollar beers, dollar hot dogs. And I feel like the Texans maybe need to do something like that, right? I feel like the seat, you know, some of the fans that pay money to go see the game, you know, I feel like they're a little hesitant to buy in. But what you CJ? Know, sh- oh, I'm going. Go ahead. No, nah, I was just gonna say, City of Houston, man. I mean, let's be real. When the Astros are in their playoff games, they're not even. It's not packed. I mean, there's no home field advantage for the Astros. And then that's what sucks because it really does. It makes you wonder. You know, everyone wants to, you know, look at the hitters and sure, you know, that's always a problem to you. There's, it's a problem that you can't hit in your home field. But Houston in general, like the Astros, the, the stadium can even be packed, but they're, they're just not loud. And then when it comes to the Rockets, they got one of the worst stadiums in the NBA, you know, and then it comes to the Texans and we know it can get great. We know it can get rocking in there. We've had one of the best stadiums, one of the best home crowds in the National Football League. We have the traveling Texans, and they do their thing, and they rock out. But we're talking NRG specifically. We're talking Reliant Days as well. Like, that stadium used to be packed, and it used to be energized 
with fans that were just mm-hmm. excited to watch some Texans football. Damn it, they were excited to watch freaking David Carr's third or fourth season out there. And <laughs> shout out to Joey. You... I didn't expect that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Caught Houston, me off guard. Houston off fans guard. are broke. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying it does definitely feel like that the Houston city is slow to get to their seats. Mm. Like, cause I see it in the Astros. I've seen it with the Texans. They are definitely like, Oh, okay. You know, the Astros like nobody's there by the first pitch. Nobody, nobody's there. Like they'll get there by halfway through the first second inning, maybe the third inning, you know, and they've been there since, before the game started. And, and it's pretty it's pretty sad to say that mm-hmm. about your own city and the fans. But, you know, it could be better. But I do know Texans fans can get it going. Yeah. If there's one stadium, if there is one fan base that can get it going, it's definitely Texans fans. We've seen it before. Has this been the most packed we've seen in RG this year? No, the Steelers game was more packed. But that was because of the opposing Steelers fans, right? Uh, yeah, it was about 65, 35, 60, 40. I was there for the game, so I would know. Uh, but NRG, sure, the Steelers fans were there, but our Texans fans over flooded that noise in the stadium mm-hmm. with their voices. I'll say that. So if that matters. No, I just want to see that crowd, you know, get up there. Uh, I've been there before years, years ago, but it's been loud, man. Um, one thing we did see from the crowd, MVP chants. Mm. MVP. I mean, I don't think we've had those chants in J.J. Watt's crazy season where he had multiple touchdowns. But to see the crowd chant MVP for a rookie, it is insane. Feels fantastic. It feels finally Mm. Like the, to me, the MVP chance is a just an all awakening moment. Mm-hmm. The two years are done. What did Miko say last week? The past, the past Texans aren't here no more. This is the 2023 Texans. Facts. And damn it, man, it felt good to hear that. It felt good. It brought a smile to my face. Like it got me going. Like damn, I want to be there. Like that's exactly like man, I want to be there chanting MVP. Like, I want to see C.J. Stroud do his thing this Sunday against the Jaguars. You know, he just got his worst game of the season out of his system. So, you know, it's time for a bounce-back game. You know, that's what I'm trying to say. C.J. Stroud MVP chants are fantastic, man. It it feels good to get the crowd going again. And this is something, again, for any Texans fan that is hesitant to go. Don't be hesitant. All right? C.J. Stroud is calling y'all out. Go out there. Be loud. Be early. Get in y'all's damn seats and be ready to stand, be ready to sit, be ready to get loud, be ready to be energetic for the whole game. And if you don't have a voice at the end of the game, then you did your job. Mm. Moving on with the rest of the team's performance, the Russian attack, another 100-yard performance from Devin Singletary, mm. 22 rushes, 112 yards, touchdown, 5.1 yards a carry. No one else ran the ball for a yard. This is Devin Singletary's job to lose. He should be the remaining starter for the rest of the season. I mean, back-to-back games with 100 yards, you have to be encouraged by what you see from Devin Singletary. Yeah, man, it's, it just seems like he's a scheme fit, plain and simple. I mean, and this isn't anything against Damian Pierce. And Damian Pierce ran really well last year, um, but he just doesn't look like the same running back in this scheme. And Devin Singletary definitely looks like someone that is comfortable, the one-cut kind of guy that you need. Uh, He's shifty in the backfield. He makes the first guy miss. Uh, We've seen it a few times now. And, Mm -hmm. hey, man, did a little little Arian Foster namaste celebration in the end zone. Okay. Foster approved. Uh, Of definitely approved. Definitely tweeted it out and everything. So, that was cool to see. That was very cool to see. Um, but, yeah, man, it is seemingly uh, looking like Devin Singletary is running back one. 
for this rest of the season, regardless how healthy Damian Pierce is. Should be back this coming week, by the way. Ooh, excited to see how those two work out. Um, the receiving attack. I think you might have found your wide receiver one. We are seeing another superstar on this Houston Texans team, Tank Dell, 10 targets, 8 catches, 149 yards, and a touchdown, the big 40-yard bomb right before halftime. Harley, what was your reaction to Tank Dell? Oh, man. I mean, can we not get enough of Tank Dell? He is an absolute superstar in the making. He is making everybody regret that they passed up on Tank Dell. He is making the rest of the NFL look foolish on their um, pre-draft, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, records of Tank Dell. It is absolutely fun to watch him. He was the best route runner coming out of college. I've said this a million times. And, yeah, some of my UH bias kicks in when I talk about Tank Dell, but it's for good reason. This man was one of the best red zone targets in the, in, in the NCAA for the past two years. You're talking about a guy that's 5'9"-ish, all right? <laughs> that's, that's giving him some inches there, you know, about 165. And he was one of the best red zone targets in the NCAA. He is fantastic, all right? The absolute connection that you had between C.J. Stroud and Tank Dell, you know, I mean, you're watching the play live and you're going, okay, who's C.J. Stroud pointing to? Because he's telling someone to go up. Mm -hmm. And you see the route and Tank Dell – I have poor number 20, Wilson, for the Cardinals. Tank Dell had him on skates on that route. I mean, he was just like, shit. Oh, 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 crap. Oh, oh. oh damn it. He went up. Like, <laughs> he was just he was just going everywhere on that route against Tank Dell. And just the beautiful connection, man. Their connection continues to grow. It started all the way back in the combine. Mm -hmm. Goes into the draft. He says, hey, I want Tank Dell. Tank Dell says, hey, Houston, I want to stay here. Don't let me leave. Don't let me leave the city. All right. And it all comes to fruition this whole season. Screw it. Why not give CJ Stroud MVP and take Dale rookie of the year? Why not? <laughs> you brought up my next conversation. I Why mean, not? Tank Dell was on pace for that's why we're so good together. Tank Dell was on pace <laughs> for a thousand yards. And I think that's what six touchdowns on the season. Yes. You have to have some consideration yes. about that. I mean, especially if CJ Shada continues to improve and play well. I mean, next week, Harley, this is what I mean. Before we get to next week, let's finish this game because I'm I'm excited to talk about this mm. Jags matchup. Me too. Houston Texans defense, Derek Stingley, maybe the best game of his career, gets tested, comes down with the INT, takes it away from the Arizona Cardinals receiver. Two pass breakups late in the game. You could not ask for a better game from Derek Stingley. It is nice to see him out there. But man, every time I see him on the screen, I get a little scared. I'm like, please get up after you make that tackle. <laughs> it has never been a conversation of skill. Can yeah. you stay healthy and help contribute to a team? Will Anderson Jr., Third sack of the season beats a triple team. Will, I have a feeling. I have a feeling. Will is about to emerge. The emergence of Will Anderson in this rest of these in the rest of the season. That's mm -hmm. definitely what this Texans defense could use. Yes, and, and there's nothing against him in this first half of the season. He's done a fantastic job. Our guy Cody Johnson put up a tweet mm -hmm. on the stats from him. I mean, first in hurries. First and stops, like, uh, I mean, it, I, I don't have the tweet on me right now. I'm just remembering off the top of my head. But he has just been. First in a lot of categories. Yeah, amongst rookies. Okay? Amongst rookies. Uh, uh, his rookie class, assumingly. And so, yeah, Will Anderson, the emergence of him in the rest of these games, however many games you got left, yeah. Yeah, that that's definitely going to be needed for this Texans defense. If they're going to reach another level, if they're willing to just rush for and trust the secondary that they've been doing for a few, you know, the last two games specifically, Will Anderson, man, he was a problem. Mm. And dude, one of the plays is just absolutely fantastic to me. James Conner, 
six two, two thirty. Pause. Huge running huge. back. I mean, just massive. And Will Anderson breaks open the play, and he just blows up. Mm. He just blows up James Conner. Uh, James Conner is not a guy. I mean, no help from anybody. This was all Will Anderson. Just the strength of this rookie alone. And I know we've seen his strength, you know, multiple times on video, whoever wh it is, beating people on a drum. But that was just impressive. For a rookie to take down James Conner like nothing was just, whoa, okay now. Okay now. You get him to emerge like you're trying to imply for the about six games, seven games you got mm -hmm. in the rest of the season. Oh, yeah, Texas defense, you think this last this last game was good. It's going to be getting really sweet in here if Will Anderson starts to emerge and starts translating those pressures into sacks. And can we give Will Anderson credit because I'm pretty sure he's heard the slander all the way since week two. And for him to just keep his head down and working, and if he does emerge – like we think he is going to, he is going to shut up a lot of people. I think Will Anderson is going to put this conversation whether or not it was worth trading up to him to bed. Someone brings up Blake Cashman. Cashman is a superstar. Yeah. Already has won AFC Defensive Player of the Week yesterday. 19 tackles, one mm -hmm. tackle for loss, one mm. sack, one mm. pass defense. I mean, Blake Cashman. Have yourself a season. It's, this is a career year for him. Dude, it's always been about him staying healthy. Mm. That was a big thing with him uh, going into his NFL career, really. He was always hurt with the Jets. We brought him over here for late pick. I think it was a six-round pick trade. Excuse me. Kudos to Nick Casario for getting Blake Cashman. Kudos for Nick Casario. Trading up for Will Anderson. Kudos for drafting C.J. Stroud. Tank Dell. What? I mean, who, who else, man? How, how many people are going to disregard the fact that Nick Casario is making these moves, late pick swaps, mm. Shaq Griffin, solid what? performance, Steven Nelson, what? solid performance, Tyvira Thomas, what? pretty decent year. I mean, Derek Stingley had what? himself one of the biggest games of the year. I mean, come on, man. Come on. We're going to have to start looking at Nick Casario potentially as an executive of the year Ooh! For, for the NFL. Yes, I said that out of my mouth. There has been a lot of people in the comment section for years, the last few years, that have been calling for Nick Casario's head, that have been wanting him to get fired. And sure, maybe I've been a little bit like, huh, man, maybe – Maybe they should fire. Maybe they should. Maybe they should just keep the the oven warm. You know, on, on Nick Casario. But on. overall, he's done a really good job. Mm. And this last two games, actually, he's had his guys that he's acquired are making plays, are doing fantastic things. And this is also kudos to D'Amico Ryan's. You know, working with what he's got right now. Again. This defense is not a finished product. No, sir. All right? And like Cashman, I, I, I took the spotlight away from him. He deserves the majority of this spotlight. As long as he stayed healthy, he was a fast linebacker who could potentially do really good in coverage. And speed kills in the NFL for linebackers. That's the biggest thing to find in a linebacker now is speed. Mm. You get a guy that has the speed and awareness combination – Okay, you could get something out of this linebacker. No more of the Bernardic McKinney's of the world where they're just run stopping guys, which, you know, hey, I love me some BMAC. I love them. But that's just not the wave anymore. You know, that's just not it. You got to have a line 70. Yeah, you know, like you got to have a linebacker that covers, that is at least half what decent in coverage. And Blake Cashman has a knack of always being around the ball always being around the player with the ball, making the key tackles. He was absolutely fantastic in the absence of Denzel Perryman this Sunday, and it was fun, man. Blake Cashman, cash money. He is earning himself a paycheck, all right? He is earning himself literally some money. 
Mm. All right. And Cash, man, he is awesome. Absolutely fantastic linebacker. And I cannot wait to see who else. This is for the future, of course. I just cannot wait to see who else they pair up with him. Christian Harris had himself a solid game as well. But this linebacker core is still a weak spot for this Mm. Texans team. And a game where Kyler Murray, we thought, okay, how are you going to contain him? How are you going to do this? You you know, the weak spot is your linebackers. And they showed up. Christian Harris and Blake Cashman, have yourselves a game. Fantastic day from the defense overall. You know, you bring up this defense, you know, D'Amico Ryan's working with what he has. I found myself looking at the free agent list yesterday. (laughs) And boy, does my mouth salivate pause. Mm. When I see names like Patrick Queen, okay, okay. Devin White, okay. Levante David, those names excite me. When I look at the defensive tackle, hey, DJ Reader, come back home. I would love this man. Free agency is going to get so excited in the offseason. Hardly, but overall, this was just a... This was a gritty win by the entire Houston Texans team. I mean, we also missed a field goal. Hopefully, Kaimi Fairbairn does come back sooner rather than later, even though we have Mike Boone. But it's time to put Arizona away. Because next week is your biggest game in maybe the past four to five years. Why? Because you are battling for first place. For the AFC South, you Mm. are welcoming the Jacksonville Jaguars, who you destroyed them earlier in the season. Mm -hmm. You want to shock the world. You take first place of the AFC South this Sunday. Because once Mm. again, no one believed the team was going to be here. At this point last year, we were saying, where are we going to be picking? Now this year, we are saying, Who could we potentially be playing in the NFL postseason? I like my Houston Texans against every other team the rest of this season. Harley, we are about to go on a run, and it starts with taking the AFC South in the H this Sunday. Preach. Preach. Snaps. I mean, come on now. We got the biggest game, like you said, this Sunday against the Jacksonville Jaguars. This is for the division. We need everybody there. We need NRG to be popping. Mm. Make sure you are there early. Make sure you are loud for the entirety of the game. We all saw what CJ Stroud and company did in Jacksonville. All right. The the emergence of CJ Stroud, the opening game of CJ Stroud, where he just said, you know what? Hello, NFL. My Mm. name is CJ Stroud. And I'm going to use the Jacksonville Jaguars as a stepping stone to Mm. etch my name into history. All right. And we all saw what he did. We all saw that he had a magical performance in the last game at Jacksonville. I expect this game to be competitive. Mm. I expect it to be maybe even a little chippy. Mm. I expect some good football this Sunday. The Texans, the Jaguars, this is the game right here. We Mm. got a lot of football still left to play, okay? But to get 2-0, to sweep potentially the AFC South Division champs of last year, the same team that was in the divisional round of the playoffs last year, came back and beat the Chargers in the wild card. Like, this is a team that you cannot take lightly. And I already know D'Amico Rhines is going to have this team ready. There cannot be no let-up game from no. this team. And if history proves us right, this team has played up to the competition consistently. Mm. It did not matter if it was the Pittsburgh Steelers with the junior varsity squad at offensive line. Zero sacks. What you do? All right. Then you do what? Okay, New Orleans Saints, top defense in the league. What you do? Go in your house. Beat them. No problem. All right. Then you had yourself. Go into Cincinnati. Huh? At Cincinnati. On the road. Must win game in terms of your playoff hopes. And come on, man. You went in there. 
you beat the best quarterback in the NFL, they said. Mm. You beat Lou Anarumo's defense, they said. Mm. Lou Anarumo was going to do this, this, and that, and the other to the Houston Texans. Oh, and what does C.J. Stroud do? He went out there and he put on a show. He went out there and took out Joe Burrow and company. And then he did, you know what? Y'all think I'm going to have a let-up game against these Cardinals? Y'all think we're going to slip up? Nah, nah. Uh-uh. Nah, nah. We learned our mistakes from the Falcons. We mm. learned our mistakes from the Panthers. Mm. Okay? We're going to come out here. Sure, I might not have my best game. But the defense says, you know what? We got your back, Rook. We got your back. And if this defense continues playing the way they are playing, they had themselves a game against the Jags the first time around. All right? I would love to have a little bit of Jimmy Ward action back this mm. Sunday in NRG. I would definitely love to have that. I'd like to be a little bit healthier going into this game. But if ands and coulda, wouldas, oh, well. This Houston Texans team, it don't matter anymore. They are playing with so many guys that are out. They have won consistently without guys, big-name guys, not in the game consistently have beaten the guys consistently have beaten good teams because you know why D'Amico Ryan said it best in the Bengals. We a good team too. Mm. And we're going to show the Jaguars exactly what a good team's all about. Let's go take that AFC South division. Let's go ahead and take it. Ladies and gentlemen, this was a fire episode of believe in the Houston Texans. We don't want to spill too much. But the game breakdown is going to be so much fun in the next coming days. Harley, let them know where they can find you and all your latest work. We're going to have a preview, guys. Make sure y'all are tuned in. It's going to be Believe in Texans versus Believe in Jaguars. We definitely Jeez. going to have that live stream for y'all. It might come around 4 o'clock. I know some of y'all doesn't work for y'all. Make sure you watch the live stream on either one of us or our YouTube channels or listen in. On our podcast section for the Believe in Texans podcast, mm -hmm. make sure you're stream, streaming it wherever, Spotify, Apple, Google, wherever you stream all your podcasts and platforms. Believe in Texans, B-L-E-A-V in Texans. Again, so search it up. You can find me at the lead underscore H-O-U. Appreciate everybody, the mm -hmm. influx of subscribers now randomly. Appreciate everybody that is just subbing, watching. The views are going higher. The subs are going higher. We are on the road to 5,000 subscribers. We are now at 4547, mm. 4.5K subscribers. Appreciate everybody that has watched, liked, subscribed. Make sure you like the live stream as well. That's all I got for me. You can find me on YouTube. Just type in 713 Houston Sportcast. We will let you know the day we do it with the Jacksonville Jaguars, believe. But, guys, thank you so much, and have a real blessed rest of your night.